This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 631. Six Tips for Eating Healthy on a Budget by Kara Harvey of apurposedrivenmom.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. A very happy Monday to you and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. Some of the authors include Nerd Fitness, Ben Greenfield, Healthline, and lots more. And don't forget, we have five shows where we narrate blogs for you, covering a bunch of different topics. Check them all out by searching for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. Now, all month long, I've been giving you daily holiday trivia, and I'll be doing that all the way up until Christmas Day. I'm such a huge trivia nerd, and this is my favorite time of year, so I thought, why not combine the two? So here we go. This saint is honored in Sweden by the family's eldest daughter wearing an evergreen wreath on her head. In fact, this day happens every year on December 13th, which just passed us, of course. Can you guess? It is Saint Lucia, or Saint Lucy. Now, today's post comes from a new author for the show. Kara was a teacher for eight years and now helps other moms design the life they love, feel less frazzled, and reach their goals. You can learn more about her and read a lot more at apurposedrivenmom.com. And with that, Let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Six Tips for Eating Healthy on a Budget by Kara Harvey of apurposedrivenmom.com. The biggest thing I hear from people is how they want to eat healthy, but it's too expensive. I used to think the same way until we decided to change our habits and focus on eating healthy on our budget. Once we committed to do whatever it takes to gain control of our budget, we started to dramatically slash our grocery budget. We went from spending $800 a month on groceries to $400 for our family of five. How did we do it? We followed these six simple tips. Tip number one, eat out of your pantry. How many times have you gone to your pantry or refrigerator and said, I have nothing to eat? This has happened to me so many times and led me to head out to the grocery store, get some fast food or dine out. Most of us spend more money dining out than anything else. The best tip I ever got was to spend one whole week a month only eating out of your pantry. For you, it might make more sense to just do it for a few days at a time, depending on what your pantry looks like right now. If you go to your pantry and really look at what you have, I guarantee that you'll be able to make some healthy meals. They might not be the most exciting meals and you might get tired of eating rice, beans, and tuna, but if you do this a few days a month, you will save so much money. When I do this for a full week, I only buy the produce I need and then make sure to just eat the right portion sizes of what I already have. Tip number two, meal plan. Every Saturday, I sit down and spend 30 minutes creating our meal plan for the family. I plan out what we will have for each meal and all of our snacks. This helps me save when I go to the store because I'm more focused. I start with meals made out of what I already have in the house and then go from there. Next, I take my meal plan and create my grocery list and I'm very specific about the quantity I need. I only buy what's on my list when I go to the store and don't allow myself to buy any impulse buys. This helps me stay healthy and on my budget. Tip number three, utilize the farmer's markets. A lot of people talk about how eating healthy is expensive, but that is true only if you aren't smart about it. Find your local farmer's markets and eat what's in season. In the fall, apples tend to be cheaper. In the winter, broccoli and squash are where it's at. Depending on where you live, the summer is full of fresh berries that you can get for a cheap price. Find a market near you and shop there for your produce. Not only will it be less expensive, but it will be local and better for the environment. Tip number four, be boring. One thing I will share is that I eat almost the same thing daily. I have about three breakfasts, three lunch, and three dinner meals that I put into my rotation. At first, I thought this would get really boring, but I found that it helps me stay on track and saves me money. If you're making a different dinner nightly, then you need to have on hand a bunch of ingredients. If you choose to make three dishes a week, you can make enough the first time to just heat up the next time. If you aren't big on leftovers, you can do the same thing, but just make it fresh. Tip number five, buy whole foods. Many times people say it costs more to eat healthy because they're buying convenience foods. When you shop, shop the perimeter of the grocery store and avoid the aisles. 
Just because something says fat-free doesn't mean it's healthier for you. A box of organic cookies will cost you $5.99, but if you use Whole Foods to cook your own, they'll cost around $1.50 for the same amount. The less convenience foods you buy, the better your body and wallet will feel. And lastly, tip number six, buy in bulk. Most weeks, I do my shopping at bulk and wholesale stores because it winds up being so much cheaper. We will sometimes get produce there as long as I have it planned to use during the week so it doesn't go bad. Things such as egg, milk, and nuts are so much cheaper in bulk. Most health food stores also have a bulk section where you can get rice, wheat, and nuts at a cheaper price. I hope these tips help you on your start to a healthier and more financial savvy you. Remember, eating healthy doesn't have to break the bank. You'll find when you eat healthier, you can save money, not only on grocery bills, but in future doctor bills too. You just listened to the post titled Six Tips for Eating Healthy on a Budget by Kara Harvey of apurposedrivenmom.com. And a big thank you to Kara again for giving us permission to narrate from her site. Dr. Neil again here for my commentary. I really appreciate that last sentence. One of the biggest excuses I get from patients is I can't afford to fill in the blank, eat healthy, join a gym, start exercising, whatever. And the counter to that is, well, you're either going to think about paying for it now or you're going to probably end up paying more for it later in hospital bills, medications, doctor visits, you get the idea. So why not maintain the health you have now and or prevent disease later, which will actually save you much more money if you just invest in yourself now? It took me a while to figure out all these little tips and tricks to save money. As Kara mentioned, she used to buy produce in bulk. I used to do the same thing and then found a lot of that went to waste. So now I'm very careful about what I buy in bulk. Non-perishable items, house cleaning supplies, foods that I can freeze for a while, those are the items I typically purchase in bulk. Oh, and if I wander the grocery store aisles, I will buy impulse items. It just happens. And as Kara mentioned, I like to meal plan and then I make sure that I stick to my grocery list based on the meals that I plan and then stick to that list when I'm at the grocery store. Otherwise, I am vulnerable to some impulse buys too. And if you're just starting on this path, her advice to be boring is actually really, really good. This is because too many choices hinder us from taking action. So if we actually limit the number of choices of meals we give ourselves each week, we're more likely to take action. This is because if we get more than three choices, our brains get bombarded and we can't really make a great decision. You gotta love the human brain. More than three choices, our brains cannot compute. They just get overwhelmed. And so if we limit the choices, we're more likely to take action. With too many choices, our brains get overwhelmed and then we're less likely to take the right path. All right, really quickly before I go, to subscribe to our other podcasts where we narrate blogs for you, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you have a wonderful start to your week and I'll be back here tomorrow as always with a post from Ben Greenfield Fitness and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.